The expressway is also affected as well as the service lane at some point around KC University. There's always a bus stage somewhere here, so that is why the problem is. But uh, a motorist plying that route, you'll have to get used to this. I think um, there's no other way. How about outer ring? Outer ring, so far so good, moving as you head towards uh, Don Home, uh, Umoja, and uh, that side of Mutindwa, etc., etc. But uh, as you come towards uh, North Airport Road, that is where we are. So they was coming all the way from Eastern Bypass from Mbakasi, joining Mombasa Road. Mkosa, please. Uh, Harry, Mombasa Road looking pretty fine. There's nothing much to report about. And finally, let's take a look at what we have on Langata Road. Langata Road so far so good. The entire stretch looking pretty fine as you come towards Wilson Airport. And then finally, Bagadi Way joining Ngong Road. The entire stretch of Ngong Road is okay, moving pretty fine. Just a stretch around Junction here as you come towards the Meteorological Department and towards Impala Club. That's RFUA grounds. After that, everything is pretty good. How about we head to the coastal city of Mombasa? What Mombasa, good morning. So far, nothing much to report about here today. Is it because it's a Monday, so everybody's slow? Hey, let's go to work. Uh, let me start with the other side of Makupa Causeway, coming all the way from Miritini, coming down to CBD, um, along Sabasaba and Sabasaba Police Station, coming to the Central Business District. So far, so good. How about heading towards the whole of this stretch today? It looks pretty fine. The entire new Nyali Bridge. Leo Ikosawa, what Mombasa? What's the secret? Kogo where? Kila Kitu? Uh, not so busy. As yeah, not so busy today. I don't know why. But uh, the entire stretch of Nyali Road heading all the way to the sides of Bamburi and finally headed towards Malindi, etc., etc., moving pretty fine. Lastly, and uh, yeah, here we are, Ferry Channel. Today, I don't know why we are not getting that uh, uh, traffic layout this morning, but yes, that's where we are today. Nothing much to report about. A bit of some snarl up there on the other side of Likoni Ferry Channel. Okay, so Kisumu, good morning. Uh, Marie Ambo fumbled with her luo. Uh, we need to look for that pastor who prayed in Homer Bay. Um, we need to supplicate for Marie Ambo for her to get it, <laughs> for her to get it right. Okay, uh, she gets her luo very well. All right. So Kisumu, good morning. The other side of uh, coming all the way from Kakamega Road, coming to. Kondele, the best gift I usually say is for the Kakamega or Kisumu residents for that Kondele roundabout. There was a flyover here just right outside um, the, the mall, Lake Basin Mall. It was a mess way back then, uh, but so far it's been repaired. And now motorists, as you come from Kibuya Market past Kondele roundabout, you have your drive all through as you head towards we got gardens and head over to those sides. Yeah, this is where we have Lake Basin Mall. Here we are. So the, all of this stretch was a mess. There was a roundabout here as we had to Mamboleo, that one, and uh, between Mamboleo roundabout and uh, Condela roundabout. This stretch was a mess to anybody who plied this route. Between these two roundabouts, it was not so good. But uh, yeah, thanks to the government, and that is done. Okay, how about uh, we head to, yeah, let's leave it. I was told that I have to take a look at Nakur. Nakur is a city. Nakuru, good morning. Nakuru, good morning. Uh, you're not left behind today. Christmas for Thimba is coming here to tell us uh, how Nakuru is doing, but there is no traffic layout. I don't know why. Nakuru, are you awake? What's Nakuru? Are you awake? Uh, yes, this is where we are. So there's nothing much to report about here in Nakuru, really. You always a very beautiful, beautiful town to visit. Beautiful town to visit. Please, make some effort and visit Nakuru. Very well. Okay, let me take you through the front page of uh, the local dailies. Let me start with the front page of the People Daily. Uh, on the front page of the People Daily, window open for students, student loans in private varsities. This is what so we have on the front page of the People Daily. Window open for student uh, loans in private universities. There we have it. The government had locked funding to only public colleges but now law amendment gives learners the ultimate choice on institutions to join this is the story on the front page of the people daily um the private institutions now have got a bit of some reprieve and there we have it i'll take you through the details how agencies are making milking job seekers this is a story that has uh, appeared on the front page of people daily here and again america asks kenya to speed up haiti mission um, an official from Haiti was here a fortnight ago to see 
deal, that deal with President William Ruto on how the Kenya police will be headed to Haiti for a peacekeeping mission and bring some sense of sanity in that troubled nation. Again, I will tell you what is happening um, on that particular front page. Now let's hove, head over on what's making the front page of the People Daily here on uh, fleshed out for you on page four. Uh, let's see. Learners in private universities to enjoy uh, state funding. That is what we have here. Learners in private universities also to also enjoy state funding. Last year, government only funded students who joined public universities after introducing a new model. But right now, there's a reprieve for private institutions, uh, students joining institutions. Students wishing to pursue a higher education will now have a free hand to join um, either public or primary, uh, I beg your pardon, private universities of their choice and still enjoy state funding. That is what we have here. The government has discarded plans to give Kenya University and colleges central placement service that KUCCPS. Again, over two weeks ago also, um, there was a widespread kind of complaint by students who are trying to do the application via that portal and now the government has discarded the plan and now the board responsible for to place students in both public and private universities as well so the government had last year stopped funding students who opted to join private universities after introducing a new university funding model but now with the last move a student who have uh, the ultimate choice to either join public or private university. So that was revealed last week by, uh, last week on Thursday, by leader of majority, Kamani Shingwa, who withdrew the proposed amendments on the Universities Act of 2012. And uh, yes, you can also look at that story. The, it's uh, a, a good move for the students who actually had it rough to access the portal. And now, let me give you the highlights as uh, uh, fleshed out here for you on the People Daily that students can now opt to join public or private universities and still enjoy state funding. Number two, the government last year stopped funding students who opted to join private universities after introducing a new university funding model. And now last Thursday, leader of majority, Kimani Shungwa, withdrew the proposed amendment on the Universities Act of 2012. And in the communication to Parliament, National Assembly Speaker Moses Setangoda told legislators uh, Ishungwa that uh, Ishungwa had written to him seeking consent to withdraw the proposed amendment. Last but not least, Ishungwa, with her, however, said that uh, the Education Committee of the National Assembly will now take up the matter. So, the key word here is that private universities had faulted the government's proposal to stop funding students in their institutions, calling for fair distribution and funding of students. A very good move there and a reprieve for students wishing to join state um, private universities. Okay, so this is it. Again on politics, no retreat uh, on illicit brew. What this, according to the DP, Gashagwa vows to weed out what he calls poisonous alcohol, even if it risks his position in government. The DP vowed to remain committed to weed out the sale of illicit broom, which he says that has been eroding the social fabric of many societies. The DP spoke at PCEA, Gateway Parish, during the induction service of Reverend David Chege. He also said that the fight against illicit brews was a government project which he had uh, been opt uh, appointed to spearhead or to take care of. So that is what we have. Okay. Um, let me take you back to the front page and tell you what is here. For a majority of people, you are aware of this gentleman, Ezra Chiloba. <laughs> people call him Chiloba. I don't know. Uh, Chairman, how are you? All right. Chiloba. Chiloba. Man with nine lives. This is what you have here. A man with nine lives. You can take a look at that story on page three. Why is uh, Chiloba a man with nine lives? You can take a look at that story pretty fine. Uh, on uh, the front page. Okay. Okay. There we have it. On uh, page three. The reason why is uh, the People Daily is posting, actually writing about Chiloba, is that New Post confirmed Chiloba's man with nine lives, Monica. In September last year, he was suspended as CEO of the Communication Authority of Kenya. And now, 
He was appointed to serve in the same position with um, uh, the new envoys, of course. Uh, let, me, let me just bring it here. Uh, he's been uh, nominated as uh, Consulate General for Los Angeles, Ezra Chiloba, who is now going to uh, United States. The newly appointed Consul General for Los, is this Los, Los Angeles or Los Angeles? Ezra Chiloba can be described as the proverbial cat with nine lives after being removed from various offices only to resurface in other plum positions. This is what we have. Though recommendations have been made on two occasions for him to be charged with abuse of office, Chiloba has um, never seen the inside of a court, courtroom and instead his star has continued to shine brighter almost every single day. So this is where we have it. And uh, you can take a look at that story. If you, I mean, so the Monica goes, a man with nine lives, like a cat. If you know a cat, a, you, you'll, you'll hit that thing in a sack for dead, only to find it gone. And then you're like, nilifunga igunia, kwani ipaka imeenda api? So that's what it is. Okay. So you can take a look at that story. It's quite interesting. Um, read for your Monday. Kenya Kwanzaa MPs ask Raila to focus on Africa Union job push. Okay. So here we have it. Kenya Kwanzaa legislators have called on Azimio leader Raila Odinga to focus on the Africa Union chairmanship campaign and leave the local politics. While speaking at ACK St. Francis Chamanda Church in Runyenges, Embo County during a church fundraiser, uh, the Principal Secretary, Esther Moria of State Department for Technical and Vocational Education and Training, Tivat, uh, said that members of Parliament said Raila was now confusing them on which seed he was focusing on. Is he going for the AU job or still focusing on the local politics? Interesting. Interesting. Legislators in race against time to hire a new IBC team. This is what we have here. Again, an interesting bit. We have been having this back and forth on the appointment of new commissioners of the IBC. Now, new electoral team to be in place in three months, expected to set in motion plans to fill vacant seats. Members of the National Assembly are now banding the midnight oil to reconstitute new independent electoral and boundaries commission IBC to beat this year's deadline for the boundaries delimitation exercise. The new commission expected to be in place in at least three months is also expected to set in motion plans to fill vacant parliamentary and ward seats as a result of deaths and nullification of elections by the courts. That is what is here on the front page, on the inner pages, not necessarily the front page of the People Daily, making it uh, easy for us. Chris Pasothimba, engineer, already in studio. It's been years, I think around 15 years since we met here. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, my brother. Thank you so much. It's been a while. It's been six months, not, th not 15 it years. It seems like we met almost two years ago. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm well. Yes. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Good to see you. Asante, asante. And on that note, Happy New Year. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> we are taking a look at what you have. And on that note, there is no traffic in Nakuru. What's happening? Well, there is traffic in Nairobi. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Di di director, just, just place this. I want to tell Crispus there is no traffic in Nakuru. The entire stretch is moving. Well, you see, it's, 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 it's an issue of uh, a lot of routes have been opened up in Nakuru, where you find the main highway is no longer carrying the heavier load. Okay. So most of the residents in Nakuru yes. are able to use alternative uh, uh, routes to get to the CBD. Are you trying to paint a, a good picture about Nakuru? It is. We are, we are doing very well. Or I can just well. say people are still asleep. We are, we are doing very well. Let me say the people as, are still asleep. As <laughs> But yeah, I was in Akuru around two weeks ago, and yes. so far, the bypasses outside the city centre really has working. completely contributed to this completely. one. The same applies to Eldoret. Yes. The same applies to to Nairobi. Yes. So I think expanding as an engineer, expanding those external highways and bypasses is the only way true. to decongest major, true. man it's of these major cities. It's true. It's yeah. true. But also, we need to realize as a country, also alternatives way of getting to the CBD are yeah. also something we need to plan for. Because mm. as you open more routes, more people acquire vehicles, and therefore the load will always increase. Yeah. Um, in places like America, they have realized building roads is not always the solution. Mm -hmm. So also providing alternative ways to come to the CBD mm. is very important. Mm -hmm. And also opening up areas that can be more uh, 
vibrant in terms of uh, urban activities outside the CBD will also help. Yeah. So in Nakuru, we are also looking at expanding in terms of the urban uh, reach for the for the city, mm. so that some of the areas that are taking bringing uh, uh, load to the city yes. are also able to take it, so that we can see have. Uh, outside Nakuru town, mm. uh, outside Nakuru city, some uh, s centers that are able to provide the kind of services that people want to find in the city. Do you really have room for expansion in Nakuru town? Because if you had the other side of town, you're heading towards uh, War Memorial Hospital, past State House, the other side, again on that side, you're heading towards the lake. As, you, as, as you approach Nakuru from Nairobi, yes. there is room, it is like pipeline, right. uh, Barnabas, to be able to make them, uh, it, once we do the roads there, once we're able to provide the utilities, mm. people can be able to build uh, some very good infrastructure in terms of uh, malls, in terms yeah. of businesses. Then as you exit Nakuru, as mm. you go to Joro, there's a lot of room for growth there. Yeah. So we hope... Uh, uh, in the next, uh, if you see what we, are, what we are calling a county uh, development plan, mm. it is providing for those expansion growth in those areas so that most, most the investment that we expect from the investors yeah. will be outside the CBD. Mm. Yes. Why don't you expand the city outside, towards Ngata, the outside of town? Th that is exactly I mean, what I'm saying, yes. There. Like the areas around Joro, Ngata, yeah. those are areas where the land is still virgin. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do a good Privately real estate... Owned. Yeah, I, I, I personally come from Bahati. Okay. Yes. Are they privately owned land or? They are yeah. most of them privately owned lands. Yeah. Although uh, institutions like the Rift Valley Science Institute and Egerton mm. and there's some Minister of Agriculture own a big chunk of that land. Mm. Yes. How is the city where you are the right now? The city is doing very well. A lot of work for you? We have, uh, <laughs> we are looking at, uh, we have just finished what we call the Camp Kenya Urban Support Program Phase 1. Okay. We are looking for more funding for Kenya Urban Support Program Phase 2, mm -hmm. which we hope we'll also use that to leverage. We are about to finish the Afra Stadium Phase mm -hmm. 1 and we get Phase 2. So that maybe AFCON 2027, we can also be a host of yeah. that tournament. Yes, there is uh, a lot of war about War Memorial Hospital. That one is, you, a, is you, a matter you, in court. You don't want court. to discuss. Now. You, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about what we have on the front page of People Daily. Window open for students' loans in uh, private university. At least there is some reprieve now for students who are joining private universities. And they, around a week, two weeks or so ago, there was a lot of uproar from students who are trying to get access to the portal to apply for their courses. Some would say it was frustrating because it crashed either, uh, there was no response, but now even students will now have that liberty to choose a course in their private universities or even universities of their own choice. Perhaps there's some good news for parents or even students as well. It's important, but also on the issue of uh, the system failing, we yes. need to realize last year, a time like this, mm -hmm. uh, only 5,000 government services would be accessed on the e-citizen e e platform. Yes. Today we are talking about 13,000 services being applied on mm. the same platform. So Kenya needs to realize it's not about university students accessing this platform. Mm -hmm. This platform is heavily loaded. So the government needs to also in invest in terms of uh, rob uh, increasing the capacity mm. of this system. Yeah. So they need to be able to address some of this e perennial breakdown of the system. We have seen also MPESA having the same problems mm -hmm. because the system is struggling. So yeah. I believe that is going to be addressed. But mm. as far as the students' loans are concerned, it is good to open. I mean, these students' loans are paid at an interest. So it should not be a preview of public students, uh, public mm. university students alone. If I am able to borrow and pay when I finish my course, then why should I not be given the opportunity, yeah. even if I go to a private university? Yes. Of course, uh, Majority Leader in the National Assembly, Kimani Shung, withdrew that act, uh, perhaps. Um, for fear of discrimination, yes. I, get, I get some court cases. Yes. Uh, that would be uh, discriminatory. Uh, I was just making, looking at, taking a look at some of the stories here. Uh, Chiloba, you know the gentleman, a man with nine lives. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Chiloba, please come on my set. We need to talk about this. We need to talk about this. He yeah. was our boss at some point. We, I see at CAK. We have people like Polika Pigai. They also we have nine I mean, lives you, in the private that. sector. So <laughs> some will say that where it's, this face will it's, pray. It's just an issue of aligning yourself yeah. with the right people in the right place. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's cross over and take a look at what we have on the front page of the People Daily. Sexual abuse in school. This is what we have. Effects include poor grades and delinquency. And uh, the story on the front page says that uh, a host of secondary school students are suffering in silence as sex predators, including their classmates and teachers, pounce on them with their complaints often being ignored even by their own parents. Who will stop this silent 
epidemic. It's very, very sad that uh, at this time of age, we are still discussing such uh, issues. But uh, to tell you the truth, uh, as a young parent, these are issues that we are all concerned about. These are issues we worry about. But I also want to call on the leadership of the, the school management leadership. Yeah. They need to take some of this matter seriously. We have seen how uh, people with uh, gender-based violence go to po police station and they are ignored. We don't want also our students, our pupils, when they come to the school management mm. with these such issues, yeah. to be ignored. We also want them to give uh, an, an, op an opportunity for children to be able to share some mm. of the challenges. They may not always be sexual abuse issues, but they may also be issues of uh, uh, abuse at home, yeah. emotional abuse, violence at home, that they also are suffering from. So it's important that the school is able to create an opportunity or a platform where children can be able to share and have a conversation. Mental health is a big problem it's a big in our problem. society. It's not a reserve of uh, all of the adults. It's also a problem affecting children. So we need to be able to give uh, a, an infrastructure that can give children the opportunity to be able to share. And Let's talk. make it clear. Yes. This applies to both gender. This, especially right now, one of the challenges we are having, is, and people are not talking about, yeah. is the issue of homosexuality. Exactly. And uh, this abuse is not just from the school uh, management alone, all uh, teachers alone, even the pupils themselves.